Hi everyone, and thank you for joining me. Today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at Hyperdash. That's an awesome VR shooter that I've been following for quite a long time. Now, it's just about to get its full launch on the Quest, so it's the perfect time to jump in and take a look at what we got. One quick bit of housekeeping before we do jump in. If you're a fan of VR, don't forget to press like and subscribe so you catch all my content. Got some really exciting stuff coming down the pike, so keep an eye out. So if you don't know about Hyperdash, basically it's an arena shooter that you play are these sort of robot styled avatars. Now their defining feature is that they can dash along the map and travel at pretty fast speeds. They can also dash up to high points to get out of fire and they can ride along rails and you can sort of shoot around you at the same time. Really, really fun game, very fast, very frantic, but really, really good fun. Now the game's been in alpha release for quite a long time. I first saw it almost a year ago and if I'm honest, it felt quite basic. The textures were minimal, all the walls had this sort of grid effect, almost like a sort of hollow deck, and it just really didn't look that well developed. I thought that's the way it was going to stay and that that was the kind of thing we were getting. But things have moved on a lot and now the game has progressed to quite an impressive place. So over the past year, all of the textures have been updated, the character models look great, the walls look fantastic, it really looks like a well thought out arena now. The game modes have been updated and there's some really good game modes. Game modes that will be familiar to first person shooter players. Obviously you've got your classics like deathmatch. You've also got domination where you can hold certain points around the map. You've got control point where there's one key central point fought over by the two teams. You've got payload where there's a vehicle that has to travel from one end of the map to the other. It travels when you're stood on top of it so you have to fight for sort of control of that vehicle. If you can get it across the map first you win. There's some really, really fun games. It's worth checking out. All of them play roughly the same. They're quick, fast shooters, but it's really good fun, and I think it's worth playing. Now, it's very much an online game, and the online lobbies are really good. So when a game's not fully released, and particularly when you have to access it through something complicated like SideQuest, or, you know, more complicated than clicking on the store and just downloading the game, you get concerned for the player base, particularly when you need big lobbies to be filled for a game to be playable. But this game manages it. Because it's fun and because it's engaging, people are always playing. Now, no doubt that now it's getting the full quest release, we're going to get even more players on there, so your lobbies are going to be filling up quickly. Before your lobbies are filled, the game does populate them with bots. Now, the bots are all right. They play quite well and they're fun, but they're not the most intelligent AI. I think I've actually got a clip where I take down a whole squad of bots just using two shields. I don't even have a gun in my hands. I literally just stand in front of them holding those and they're not intelligent enough to think of a sort of creative solution to get around me and shoot from the back or anything like that. So they just, just start firing and their own bullets sort of ricochet back at them. <laughs> pretty poor stuff. But in general, they're pretty good. And when they're mixed in with some human players, you do get killed by them quite often. So it's worth having and it does sort of add more to the game. But I should think we're gonna see less and less of them as the player base grows. There's a great range of guns. So you start off each round with two pistols, one in each hand, and they're actually all right, you know. Most games start you off with a sort of poor quality weapon and you have to fight for a better one. But in this game, you could actually play right through to the end just using those pistols. You kind of feel a bit like John Wick as you do it. They're quick and they're fast. You can charge them up for a sort of ricochet bullet that comes out and bounces around the walls. They're good fun. Some of the other options though do kick things up a gear. So the snipers are great, they bring you one shot kills and they can shoot from a really long distance away. The rocket launchers have big impact, the SMGs are quick and sort of melt players away. All really fun and worth playing with. Now all of the guns are played akimbo, so one gun in each hand. And if I'm honest, that's my main struggle with the game. So I'm so used to playing other VR shooters, where your right hand is your predominant weapon hand. It's all about aiming down the sight, lining up that point with your eye, and then using the second hand to support that. So when I get into a confrontation, my automatic reaction is to just use my right hand to fire and shoot. And I often find I completely rinse that weapon before I start shooting with the second. Now it's so much more effective if you can get used to pointing both of them and just double hitting at the same time. Twice as many bullets fly in and you really do sort of wipe through enemies. The players that are at the top of the leaderboards are often the most comfortable with that kind of setup. Now as it's getting its full launch, I've wondered, you know, what is the general reaction to this game? So I logged on to SideQuest and I read the reviews. And now they're mostly five stars, which is great, but there's a big, big chunk of one star reviews. And I, I went looking through those and nearly every one of them said, oh, I really like it, but you should get rid of the teleportation. And I just thought, what? That's like the main defining feature of this game. That's what separates it from other shooters. Don't play with that, stick with that. That's what the game's about. 
One possible warning I've got for you is that I expect the player base might change a little bit when it goes fully over to the Quest store. So at the minute it's a completely cross-platform game. You can play it on Steam, you can play it on Viveport, or you can play it on Oculus if you download it through SideQuest. Now SideQuest involves a few steps to get it on your headset, so that puts off a lot of younger players. Maybe they don't have access to a computer or just don't know those steps, so they avoid the kind of SideQuest games. So you tend to get quite an adult player base. But this game has quite a interesting art style that I think will attract young people quite well. So when it does go fully over to Quest, I'd expect to see a lot more younger people playing. So if you're the kind of person who's triggered by squeakers, this might be a game to avoid, but only time will tell. So there you go, that is a quick look at Hyperdash. Do you know, I genuinely think it might be the best arena shooter in VR. I think it's already in a good place. I'd love to see it progress more once it's been fully released and see where this thing can really go. But I've been enjoying playing it and I'm hoping to play some more. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Before you go, don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed. I've got some really exciting stuff coming up and I'd love you to see it. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.